Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, we thank God for this uh, day and this opportunity that we should come before you today. Pastor Eric here with my wife Felicia. We have come to you this Saturday morning to share with you a few words of God. Praise the Lord. Praise Shall we bow down our heads and pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful day and the opportunity that you have given to us. Amen. That we also should come before your holy throne and worship at your feet we come that your spirit will teach us and guide us holy spirit we invite you into this presence this atmosphere draw souls unto yourself for the bible says that if i be lifted up i will draw all souls unto myself christ jesus as you are seated high above all principalities and powers have your way and minister to your people this morning in the name of jesus christ we pray with all thanksgiving and praise amen amen like i'm saying we thank you today is uh the first time that we are we are felicia and i trying to i mean connect with you all all over the world wherever you are to share with you the word of god last week saturday sunday i shared a few words of god with you and i i thought maybe i should continue because i did not have enough time on the radio uh the fm radio to share with you the whole i mean a scripture so maybe today we take a few minutes to go through this scripture verse and uh i hope that by the end of the the session you will be mightily blessed i just want to thank you for now i want you to pick up the phone and call some friends invite some friends to watch with you tune to pastor eric facebook at pastor eric or you can join us also at christ redeemer church facebook um, and then let's share it together. Let's share this word of God together. It's going to be awesome. I believe that God is going to move mightily among us here. Felicia, don't you agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think today is going to be wonderful. And uh, I just I just want to take a few moments to thank you for even taking this time to to come together that we all share the word of God in these last days. It is very very imperative and very very important that as believers we share the word of god together encourage each and other each other in the words of god see that i mean uh, there's so many things going on in the world that tends to take our attention tends to distract us from the very purpose of god's uh, i mean purpose in our life now today i'd like to share with you or continue with you what i began on last week sunday the desert evangelism i've titled it the desert evangelism so call some friends 
and let us take this journey through the desert together. Would you? Okay, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Acts of the Apostles. This is a very familiar scripture verse that uh, you've read it so many times. But today I just want us to go a little bit deeper and then see what God has for us in there. Maybe we could share with some friends and those who have not really understood it. Because I really believe that there is powerful um, um, evidence of God's work at hand in uh, in this scripture verse. So I would like to read Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 8, verse number 26 to 37. I will be reading from the uh, New King James Version. Let us hear the word of God. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This, this is desert. So he rose, he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, an Enoch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip, to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does this, does the prophet say this of? Himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at, at the scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to an, some water and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless your word that has come forth, O God. May it go forth, O Lord, to your people who are listening and viewing from all over the place. May it minister to them, heal them, strengthen them, encourage them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Friends, it's, it's a great opportunity to learn the scripture of God. The word of God to hear properly. You see, like I said, this is a very familiar scripture verse that you've read so many times. See, it's talking about this uh, Philip, who was an evangelist. You know, after, the, after the, the, the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, the church prospered under the, the apostles. But there was also persecution. So in the time of this persecution, the, 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 the church scattered. And some of these disciples, who were the disciples of the apostles, became I mean, evangelists. They went all over the place preaching the word of God. And Philip went to Samaria and preached. The Bible says that while he was in Samaria, in that village of Samaria, the Spirit of God asked him to go to this desert road a road that links I mean, Jerusalem to Ethiopia, a desert road. And as the Spirit of God took him there, he came and encountered this prominent man. And I'd like you to go back a little bit and then see the status of this man. The Bible says that he was a very prominent man, someone who was uh, an executive of the Queen of Candice, who took care of his treasury, which means that he probably was a, a financial minister of some sort. But this man 
was so dedicated to God that he was able to find time to come to Jerusalem to worship. And it was one, it was one of these occasions while he was returning from worship in Jerusalem that he encountered Philip. See, this man was a prominent man. You could see that the Bible said he was reading the scriptures, the book of Isaiah, tells you that he was somebody who was a God-fearing person, a God-loving person, a devout worshiper of God. He was doing what the, the law required. The law required that you, 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 I mean, you go to the house of God and then you worship. So you see, this man was doing everything according to the book, the book of the law. This man, you can see that he was a very righteous man in the, in the sight of the law. But uh, now, just take a step back and, let's, and uh, understand this. This man was reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. I mean, in those days, the books was not just like the Bible that now you can go to Amazon and then just pick up a Bible or go to your bookstore and pick up the Bible. For somebody to own the book of the prophet must be somebody who was very devout. Somebody who was very prominent to be able to uh, afford and get this, this scripture or this book. So this man was not an ordinary man. He was not just any other person. He was somebody well known. Somebody who was well connected. Somebody who was well devout according to the law. And yet this man did everything according to what was supposed to be he was doing. But, you know, doing exactly that, what the law was supposed to be doing, is what we call religion. You know, religion thrives on don'ts and do's, do's and don't do, don't do this. That is religion. Religion is, it, it thrives on the, on, on the law. But, you see, the church is built on faith. This man was very religious. Just like a lot of people, you see. There are so many people in the world now who are just like this man. They are very sincere like this man. They like to go to the house of God. Oh, they like their own Bibles. I mean, the encyclopedia of the Bibles. The, the, the Bible dictionaries. They have all these books surrounding them. They read it most often, always reading them. These people are sincere people doing, going through the motions. But most of them are sincerely wrong just like this man he knew everything he was doing everything according to the book he was very sincere but he was very religious and you see my brothers and sisters our faith now is not about religion our faith now is about christ faith in christ jesus not about do's and don'ts this man like so many people now are very sincere in their worship but they are sincerely wrong. They are religious, but they are not saved. This man was very religious, but he was not saved. If he was saved, mother, this God would not send, I mean, his servant, the, 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 I mean, the evangelist, to go to him. It tells us that this man was lacking something, right? Mm. He was lacking something. He was very religious, but there was something that he was lacking. He was not saved. You see, there are a lot of people who have amassed books and books upon themselves. All the Bible dictionaries and all the Bible encyclopedias and all various versions of the Bible around them. They, have, they go through the motion of going to church every Sunday and coming up and down. Just like this man. They don't touch, they don't eat, they don't do that. They are not fornicators, they are not, I mean, the people who are wicked people. They are loving people but they are still not saved like this man he was not saved you come across so many people and you know what they tell you oh i was born again i came to know god when i was just a small boy or a small girl even some people will go as far as to show you the very shirt or clothes that they wore when they were little before they were they were born again but they are not saved you see, the salvation, the way that leads to salvation, is not about do's and don'ts. It's not about the observances. It is about the grace of God. It is about faith and the grace of God. 
this man, but she was he was very religious, but he was not saved. Upon all the things that he was doing, God sensed that he needed something else. And that's what we come across a lot of people. That's why we come across a lot of people even sitting in churches. Every Sunday they go to church. They are very religious in the things that they do. They know that every Sunday, 10 o'clock is church service and they'll be there. They know when the prayer times are. They know everything when it comes to the law. But they themselves, their heart is far away from God. They are religious, but unfortunately they are not saved. They are religious, but they are not saved. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. That knowing him, knowing Jesus Christ, and accepting him are two separate and different things. It is two separate and different points in our Christian faith. Knowing him, Jesus Christ, and uh, accepting him, they are two different things. You know, there are people who have accepted Jesus Christ they say we have accepted him as our, our Lord and Savior, but they have never known him. You see, you know, accepting him, it takes your will, you, from your heart, yes. hearing the word of God, yes. one preached to you, and then you accept him. You say, Lord, I hear it. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. You accept him. Amen. From the heart, yeah, you confess him. But knowing him is two different things. To know Jesus Christ, no one can know Jesus Christ apart from the Holy Spirit. It is when we allow ourselves that the Holy Spirit works within us, the, the, the indwelling Spirit works within us, He reveals Jesus Christ to us. You see, the Bible says that no one can say Jesus Christ is Lord except the Spirit of God. It is only the Spirit of God who can prompt you, who can allow you to know Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus himself said that when the spirit of truth comes, he will reveal me to you. Amen. The spirit of God reveals Jesus Christ to us. So the more you walk with the spirit of God, the more you, you allow him to work in your life, the more that you can know Jesus Christ. Amen. You cannot know Jesus Christ just by accepting him. Accepting him, yes, good. That is a point in your Christian faith. But you have to make it a point to knowing him. And to knowing Jesus Christ takes the holy spirit yeah. no one can say jesus is lord except by the holy spirit that is what is that is what the the the, 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 the scripture tells us knowing jesus christ takes the holy spirit and it is it depends on how committed you are to the holy spirit because we are being we are we, we are being transformed from glory to glory each day has what the holy spirit reveals to us about Jesus Christ. So you see, not many people can claim that they know Jesus Christ. Yeah, maybe they've heard about him. Yeah, they've read about him. They've heard somebody talk about him. But they themselves can never. He said that when the Spirit has come upon you, then you will have power yes. to witness. Yes. Witness what? Witness Jesus Christ. Yeah. You cannot witness Jesus to anyone when you don't have the Spirit indwelling you and allowing Him to manifest Christ to you. It's, knowing Jesus Christ is not how you know Him. It's what the Spirit shows you who He is. Amen. You know, it's, it, 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 it's a little bit confusing to others, to some people. But it is simple, brothers and sisters. But this is very simple, so right? Simple. Because Jesus Himself said that, you cannot know. He said that. He said, when the Spirit comes, He will reveal me to you. If you can know Him by yourself or by reading books, He would have told you that go read books and you know more about me. Mm -hmm. But He said that you can only know Him by His through His Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. So now I have digressed a little bit. Let, let us pick up the story from where we got we, we left off. Let's pick up the story from Philip going alongside this eunuch. You see, the Bible says that when the, the Spirit of God sent this uh, Philip to the eunuch, this Ethiopian uh, uh, eunuch, that he was reading the scripture. And the portion of the scripture that he was reading, 
was Isaiah 53, where, 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 where we just read. You know, but the man, being all that learned, still did not understand. And so, when Philip asked him, do you understand what you are reading? You know, I am very touched by the answer that the man gave him. I am very touched. Do you realize what he said? He said, how can I, how can I understand it unless someone explains it or teaches it to me? This man, with all his riches, with all his, his, his position in society, was humble enough to understand that he, does, he didn't understand. He did not know. How wonderful that is. You see, there are a lot of people who would find it very difficult to accept or to admit that they don't understand. If we now, as we try to learn together, to journey on this journey together, it's going to be hard for some people to say, well, he thinks he knows it all. Mm. Oh, I knew this long time ago. People will not accept that they needed maybe the Holy Spirit or someone to help them understand. Mm. This man said, no, I do not understand it. Unless somebody teaches me. Since we need to be humble in our Christian life. We need to be humble so that the Spirit of God will teach us. Maybe the Spirit of God will not come to you in a dream and then start teaching you. Maybe the Spirit of God will not just, I mean, come and then manifest himself to you, teaching you like a teacher. Maybe he will, he will, he will teach you through your pastors, through your Bible teachers. But if you are not attentive and you, you, don't, you don't want to accept what they are, you are being taught, then how can you understand? You will always be thinking that you are sleeping and God the Holy Spirit will come and reveal himself to you and start teaching you. God could do everything. He could do that. He has done that with me before so many times when I began my ministry. But it doesn't mean that you should not learn from books or you should not learn from other people whom God can use to teach you. This man said, I cannot understand it unless someone teaches me. And so the Bible says that Philip began to teach him. He began to teach him about what the, the scripture was saying. He told him about Jesus Christ. He said that no, the scripture that you are reading is not about the prophet himself. But it's a, prophet, it's a prophecy about the Messiah who has already come and gone. And so based on this scripture, Philip began to tell this man to preach to him and teach him about Jesus Christ. I don't know if you are ready to learn about Jesus Christ today. I don't know what maybe you too may want to know Jesus Christ this morning. Philip began to teach him. And beginning from where he read, he told him about the, the prophecy about Jesus Christ. You see, in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 7, we find that the Bible is saying that there is going to be born a king, a man, someone. Let's turn your Bible to to Isaiah chapter number... Let, 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 let's read uh, chapter number 9. I want to read chapter number 9. From verse 6, it says that, For us a child is born, unto us a sign is given and the government and and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of david and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So, you see, with the scripture, he began to teach the eunuch about what Isaiah was really talking about when he said about... When he, when, 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 when he talked 
about about the the the, the, the messiah who was led like a lamb to the slaughter who was bruised for our iniquities who was chastised and who's who, who who bore our iniquities you see he had to go back and tell him about the promise of god the prophecy of god that the messiah was going to come and save israel he was going to sit on the throne of david his his forefather the bible says of his kingdom there shall be no end so we see with this scripture he began to to explain to to the unit that jesus christ who came was the messiah jesus christ who was crucified in jerusalem was the messiah you see to prove the point he started to talk to him when we read he said that jesus christ when he came he preached he performed miracles he did everything that isaiah pro prophesied that the messiah would do what are some of the things that the prophet that the the, the the prophet prophesied when we turn our bibles to isaiah chapter 35 and then if we read from verse uh four he said that say to those who are fearful in heart be strong and do not fear behold your god will come with vengeance with the recompense of god he will come and save you now i want you to highlight this this very particular verse because he says that your god will come and then when that god will come what is the god going to do what are the signs that are going to show that the one that i have sent the god he has come in verse number five he says that the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the of the dumb will sing for waters shall burst forth in the wilderness and the streams in the desert the parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitations of the jackals where each lay there shall be grass with reeds and uh, and rushes you see the prophet is saying here that god is going to come to his people he is going to send his messiah he said the messiah who will be coming is god you see in the old jewish custom they saw the scripture that the the, the the enoch was reading to be referring to isaiah himself but here philip is saying that the prophecy is not about isaiah but it is about the messiah who will be called emmanuel god with us as we, we read in isaiah chapter 7 the messiah upon whose shoulders the government will rest he said this messiah is god you see the problem with the jewish nation at the time was that they refused to accept jesus christ as the messiah and as god you see the enoch began to teach this man that the messiah has come and everything that was prophesied of the, of the messiah this man jesus christ who came has fulfilled it because we see in the book of uh, matthew in uh, in, in, uh, in matthew that uh, matthew 17 and 5 will you tell the bible to matthew 17 and 5 with me quickly you can write some of these scriptures down and then look them up later in matthew 17 and 5 the word of God said, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. This is God testifying and identifying Jesus Christ after he was baptized that this is his beloved son. The prophet Isaiah prophesied that the Messiah will also be God's 
son. He will be God's beloved son. So you see, Philip explained this to the the unit. Turn with me again to the what the prof, the prophet prophesied in Isaiah, in Isaiah forty two, verse number one and two. He says, "Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my elect one, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him." And he will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. He will not cry out, nor raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard, to be heard in the streets. You see, the prophet Isaiah prophesied that the Messiah will be identified by God, by the Spirit of God, as God's beloved. And like we read in Matthew chapter 17 and 5, we find that this, after he was baptized, the Spirit of God came to him to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah 42. When we read about the account of the transfiguration, we find that God also at that time also identified Jesus Christ before the apostle Peter, James, and John that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So with all these words, Philip Preach to the inner, telling him, explaining to him that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who had come and been crucified, is the Messiah. The man, Jesus Christ, whom they crucified, is the Messiah. After all, he said that when the Messiah comes, these are some of the signs that we will know that he's the Messiah. What are the signs? Isaiah chapter 35 and verse 5 says that the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped so with this the eunuch heard from philip that this jesus christ the messiah who had come the one who has been crucified died and has been resurrected he is the messiah because when he came there is evident proof that the blind saw he opened the eyes of the blind, just as is prophesied in Isaiah 35 and 5. The people who could not talk, the dumb spoke. They recovered their speech as prophesied in Isaiah 35. The lame walked as prophesied in Isaiah 35. So you see, everything that the Messiah was supposed to do, this man, Jesus Christ, whom the, the uh, authorities crucified in Jerusalem was the Messiah. Until then, this Enoch did not know that. He never understood. Even though he had been to Jerusalem several times, he was never able to connect the dots to know that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. There are all the signs of healing the blind was prophesied. And he also showed him, when we read Isaiah chapter uh, chapter 61, Isaiah 61, turn your Bibles with me to Isaiah 61, another family of scripture verse that you've read so many times. Isaiah 61 and then one says that, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, the opening of prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all those who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning. This, the, as the prophet Isaiah prophesied about the coming Messiah, that he will preach good news to the poor. Philip explained to the eunuch that this has happened. This Jesus preached. He preached the good news to the people. He preached them and he healed. He came, he, Jesus himself, in Luke chapter 4 and verse 17, 18, confirmed this after he had 
quoted this scripture he said that today this scripture has been fulfilled in your presence turn your bibles with me to luke chapter number four let us hear what jesus christ himself said concerning himself being the messiah because isaiah prophesied that this is what the messiah would do in isaiah 61 and when jesus christ came the bible says in uh, luke chapter 4 the verse 8 he says the spirit of the lord is upon me and he has because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor jesus christ uh, been, uh, quoted the scripture of isaiah 61 then when he had finished in uh, in verse 20 he says then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed upon him and he began to say to them today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing jesus christ himself proclaimed to the people that he is a, a long-awaited messiah the one who was supposed to come and save israel in fact about a week ago i found in my facebook page Somebody was forwarded it to me. And there was somebody of another religion preaching that they, that, that religion, they believe in Jesus Christ. They believe that Jesus Christ died and he rose again. They believe that he is the Messiah. And then he went on to say that, but when he came, he did not perform the things that the Messiah was supposed to do. So he was going to, he, so he's going to come back the second time. That is true. But he said that when he came back the second time, now he's coming to perform what the Messiah was supposed to do. No, 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 no. If you believe in Jesus Christ and you know that he's the Messiah, then you know that when he came the first time, he performed what the Messiah was supposed to do. He was supposed to set the captive free, preach the good news, uh, open blind eyes, uh, the, the, the cripple to walk and the lame to walk and the dumb to speak, the blind eyes to see. He did all those things testifying that he was the Messiah. And he himself proclaimed that this scripture has been fulfilled in your own eyes today. Saints, my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Jesus Christ fulfilled everything that the Messiah was supposed to do. And Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is God. According to Isaiah 35 and 4, because he said that the God himself we will come to you God himself will come to you. And when he comes to you, he will open the eyes of the blind. He will, he, will, he will cause the lame to walk. So the Messiah is God. Say with me, Messiah is God. Jesus is God. The scripture was fulfilled. So we see with all these things that this Enoch or Philip explained to this Enoch what the Messiah was supposed to do and appointed to him that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. You see, there are so many religions who proclaim that they, they believe Jesus Christ. But they, they believe him. They accept him as a good man who came and performed some miracles. Some even say that, yeah, he was a good man who came and healed the blind and did everything. He was a good teacher. He was a very good moral teacher. Yeah, we know that he's a Messiah. The Messiah is a good teacher. He came and did so many wonderful things. No, no, no. The Messiah is not the prophet. The Messiah is not just the, is not just the good teacher. According to Isaiah 35 and 4, the Messiah himself is God coming to his people Amen. to perform Amen. all these things. The Messiah, Jesus is God. I know that it's very difficult for a lot of people to swallow, but that is the truth. The Spirit of God reveals it clearly, plainly, that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and He is God. So this morning, I'm very excited to share this with you and let you understand that this same Messiah his spirit is available. The Bible says that 
He promised that all those who believe in him, he will give them his spirit who will indwell them and then help them. You know, we are all being taught day in and day out. The spirit of God who indwells in us is continually revealing Jesus Christ to us. Do I know it all? No, 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 not at all. But by each day, the Spirit of God reveals a bit of Him to me. He reveals something about Jesus Christ to me each and every day that I make myself available. If you too will make yourself available, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, which part of the world you are. It doesn't matter what religion you were born in. Religion can never save. Religion can never save. You see, when you look clearly, even when we call ourselves Christians, actually, in the, in the early days, the followers of Jesus Christ in Antioch, when they first called them the Christians, the idea was not for a term of endearment. It was, it began as a term of ridicule. Just like, oh, those Christians. You know, it, they were, they, they were, that name was given to them not as a term of endearment. You see, Jesus Christ built his church. The church of Jesus Christ is based on grace and faith in him, the, the author and finisher of that foundation of that church. Christianity began to add things, don't and dust to it. And now we have got so many branches of Christianity, each with their own dogma, each with the things that you have to touch, the things that you have to do, and the things that you don't have to do. But when we come to the true church of Christ, we are believers. And the Holy Spirit reveals to us each day our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The one, the founder of our faith, the author of our faith, he alone that we have to lift up our eyes and look up onto. Philip explained this to the Enoch. And you know what? The Bible said that he understood it. For once in his lifetime, I don't know how old this man was, but I believe that he has been frequenting Jerusalem several times to worship. But one time in his life, he encountered with the Holy Spirit. Who through Philip expounded to him who Jesus Christ was. If you avail yourself today, you too will be taught. Mm -hmm. He will teach you too. He will reveal Christ to you. And then maybe you will ask the same question. The Bible says in ending, he says that now the eunuch Having heard this, he asked Philip, as they came in, they saw some standing water. They saw some water. And he looked and said, Philip, here is water. Is there anything standing between me and being baptized? And Philip said, no. If you only believe then there's nothing standing be, uh, between you. Since so, you see, it is unbelief that stands between us from knowing Jesus Christ. Yes. It is the spirit of unbelief that is hindering a lot of people from allowing themselves to know Jesus Christ more. Mm. The Bible says that this man said that there's nothing stopping. There's nothing stopping me. And so he got off from his chariot and then allowed Philip to baptize him. Would you allow yourself for the Holy Spirit to baptize you today? You see, this Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who came and healed the blind and healed the sick and restored the sight of the blind, who caused the dead to rise and who calmed the seas, who was able to overcome the, 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 I mean the, 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 the natural things of the world. He walked upon the seas and he commanded the waters or the streams or the or, 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 or the, uh, the the sea to be quiet and it obeyed this same jesus christ is available to heal you 
I don't know what you are going through. I don't know whether it's, it's, it's a result of this pandemic. I'm not sure whether it is, a, it is a generic disease that you inherited from your family. Is it some kind of asthma? Is it a hole in the heart? Is it some depression that is in the family? The Bible says that and Jesus Christ was full of the Spirit of God and he went about in Jerusalem in Judea healing all those who were oppressed and depressed. He's available today too. To heal the depressed if you are depressed. Those who have been oppressed. I don't know which part of the world that you are in. And which system that you have been oppressed in. There are places that the people cannot even worship freely. People cannot even mention the name of Jesus Christ. Without the fear of being chastised or even stoned to death. But I'm here to tell that this same Messiah, Jesus Christ. This same person that Philip preached to the inner is available. He's available even today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's available wherever you are in the world. Yeah. He's available to heal you, to touch you. Yeah. He's available to give you your heart's desire. Yes, yes. He's available to heal you. Yes. And in the name of Jesus, arise and walk. Yes. Jesus you see, the, it, is, it is unbelief that is holding a lot of people back. Amen. But this Jesus Christ has never ceased to do miracles. Because he says to the disciples that these things that I do, when I am gone, you will do much more than all these things. He left us with a power. He said that, go out to the whole world and preach the word. Tell them about me, just like the Enoch is telling this, uh, uh, just like Philip is talking to the Enoch. Yeah. And he said that after that, there shall be signs following the believers. Yeah. In my name, you shall lay hands upon the sick and they will be healed. So don't tell me that he, there's no healing anymore. Jesus. He says that in my name they will speak with different language. Don't tell me that their the, uh, the tongues are seized. Yes. He says in my name you will pick up serpents but they will, not, they will not harm you. And you will drink of poison and you will not die. He says he's available now to do all those things. As he walked in Jerusalem and Judea healing the sick he's available now. Yes. You see, sometimes you you are in a church. You are in a setting. And all of a sudden, the preacher or the, the teacher tells you that now everybody lift up your hands and begin to pray. Or lift up your hands or, or everybody stand to your feet. And then you find people sitting down. They are sick. But that very word that came out was not from the man. was not from the woman. It was coming from the throne room of God. Yes. So that those who will arise, Amen. if you make up your Amen. mind now, you will Amen. stand up and walk. Amen. But because of unbelief, people stay still down. And they carry their, their sickness. Yes. But Jesus Christ is available now. The Bible says that he's the same yesterday, today, yes. and forever. forever. He changed not. No. Jesus Praise is Lord. 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 Jesus is Praise King. Jesus is the Messiah. The he is available to you. Amen. As he was Amen. with Philip and the Enoch, he is available to you today too. If you will lift up your hands wherever you are. Mm. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ today. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus. Mm. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. I want you to come and live in my heart. I want your spirit to live in me. And begin to show me things about you. Begin to reveal you to me. That I too will know you more. Mm -hmm. I want you to pray. If you pray this prayer with me, the Bible says that you are saved. Amen. I need you to get to a good Bible-based church Amen. where the scriptures, the, word, the true word of God is not diluted, but it's preached. I'm not asking you to go to church. I'm asking you to go to a place where the scripture, the true word of God is preached. And I know that together we all will have strength and enjoy in our hearts. Because he says that in Isaiah, that he came to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord. You know, that acceptable year of the Lord, they call it the year of Jubilee. Now, the year of Jubilee is the 49th year. There are seven times, seven times in the Jewish that God had given to the children of Israel in Leviticus. 
that on this on that day on that year the year of jubilee all debts are cancelled everyone who owes anybody every debt is cancelled and everybody is free that's why jesus christ said in in, in isaiah 61 that he has come to set the captive free because it was the year of jubilee today is the year of jubilee to you when he died on the cross all debt was cancelled the year of jubilee mm -hmm. everybody was set free everybody who believed your debt has been set free if you too believe then today all your debt your sin debt was cancelled mm -hmm. as you pray this prayer with me your sin debt is cancelled in the name of jesus who proclaimed yes. the acceptable year of the lord Amen. oh hallelujah, hallelujah. oh hallelujah Amen. praise be to jesus lift Amen. up your hands and let us pray to the father in the name of jesus we just want to thank you for this day we just want to thank you for the opportunity of the believers that are gathered around the Amen. believers that are sharing with Amen. us uh, we rejoice in you and your finished work uh, we rejoice in the year of jubilee that Amen. you set us free Amen. today the, 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 the captive are set free today those in prison are set free Amen. today the blind are seen and the deaf are, are speaking and the, and the lame are walking the dead are rising in the name of jesus christ because you today has accepted you have declared to us the acceptable year of the lord that all our sin have been cancelled on the cross of calvary lord jesus you took away our sins and when you rose on the day of of, of, of your resurrection you made us a family member we became heirs of the kingdom of god you because of your resurrection father we thank you for the souls that are listening we thank you for all thank those you. who are guarded. Thank you, Jesus. May your peace Amen. descend on every home. Amen. On every heart, Jesus. every soul that is listening. Jesus. May your peace rest upon them. Amen. I thank you all for joining with us. Amen. Mother Felicia, can you pray can you pray and then thank them for me for being available to watch us? Can you give them a blessing? Oh Nyame that was sick. Amen. Well we own Yame one when you and Yame two four. It was a certain that there will be the end of the Ama I made the entry to the Amma Amanina, Via Sinina, a strong woman as so about a woman, never ready as she did conquer any moon. It was Amen. 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 Thank you very much for joining us. You can, you can, you can always join, join us in our, in our live stream uh, every Saturday, 11 o'clock, and uh, on Sundays, 10 o'clock, 10 30. You can join us on Facebook Live to Christ Redeemer Church. Uh, Facebook Live. Join us every every Saturday, every Sunday morning. Uh, you can also join us. We have a uh, uh, Christ Redeemer uh, dot online dot church, where if you miss the Sunday morning Facebook, you can also see the same live streaming on that on that stream uh, side there. It's Christ Redeemer dot online dot church. Check us out there. And you can see all our old videos there. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free. Any comment that you have, let us know. And then tell us how we're doing. What, what would you like us to bring to you? What would you like to learn? What would you like? See, we are on the same journey on this desert road together. Let us share it together. Yeah. God bless you. God Until bless next you. time. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. God bless you. God bless God you. Bless. God bless you. I don't know.